Etienne Jacques Joseph Alexandre MacDonald, first Duke of Taranto, was a Marshal of France and military leader during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. Family background MacDonald was born in Sedan, Ardennes, France. His father, Neil McEachan, later MacDonald, came from a Jacobite family from Helbeb in South Uist, in the west of Scotland. Military life. In 1785, MacDonald joined the Irish Legion raised to support the Revolutionary Party in the Dutch Republic against the Kingdom of Prussia. After it was disbanded, he received a commission in the Regiment of Dillon. At the start of the French Revolution, the Regiment of Dillon remained loyal to the King, except for MacDonald, who was in love with MLLE Jacob, whose father was an enthusiastic revolutionary. After his marriage, he was appointed aide-de-camp to General Charles-François de Mauriers. He distinguished himself at the Battle of Jemaps and was promoted colonel in 1793. He refused to desert to the Austrians with de Mauriers and as a reward was made general of brigade and appointed to command the leading brigade in Picagru's invasion of the Netherlands. His knowledge of the country proved useful, and he was instrumental in the capture of the Dutch fleet by French hussars. In 1797, having been made general of division, he served first in the army of the Rhine and later in that of Italy. When he reached Italy, the Treaty of Campo Formio had been signed, and Bonaparte had returned to France, but, under the direction of Berthier, MacDonald occupied Rome, of which he was made governor, and then in conjunction with Champion Lit he defeated General Mack, and took the Kingdom of Naples, which became known as the Parthenopian Republic. When Suvorov invaded northern Italy, and was undoing the conquest of Bonaparte, MacDonald moved northwards. With 36,000 men he attacked Suvorov's 22,000 men at the Trebia. After three days fighting, receiving no help from Moro, he was utterly defeated and fled to Genoa. Later he was made governor of Versailles, and acquiesced, even if he did not participate, in the events of the 18 Brumaire. In 1800, he received command of the army in the Helvetic Republic, maintaining communications between the armies of Germany and of Italy. He carried out his orders diligently, and in the winter of 1800-1801, he was ordered to march over the Splugen Pass at the head of the Army of the Grisons. This achievement is described by Mathieu Dumas, his chief of staff and is as noteworthy as Bonaparte's passage of the St. Bernard before the Battle of Marengo, although MacDonald did not fight a battle. On his return to Paris, MacDonald married the widow of General Joubert, and was appointed French ambassador to Denmark. Returning in 1805, he was associated with Moreau and thus incurred the dislike of Napoleon, who did not include him in his first creation of marshals, under Napoleon. He remained without employment until 1809, but then Napoleon made him military advisor to Prince Eugene de Buhamis, viceroy of the Kingdom of Italy and a corps commander. He led the army from Italy to join with Napoleon and at Wagram led the attack which broke the Austrian centre and won the victory. Napoleon made him a Marshal of France on the field of battle and soon after created him Duke of Taranto in the Kingdom of Naples. In 1810, MacDonald served in Spain and in 1812, he commanded the left wing of the Grand AAR Army QT for the invasion of Russia. In 1813, after participating in the battles of Lutzen and Bautzen, he was ordered to invade Silesia, where Blücher defeated him with great loss at Katzbach. At the Battle of Nations in 1813, his force was pushed out at Liebertwokwitz by Johann von Klenor's IV Corps on a counter-attack. His troops took the village back. Later that day, Klenor foiled his attempt to flank the Austrian main army, commanded by Karl Philipp, Prince of Schwarzenberg. After the Battle of Leipzig, he was ordered to cover the evacuation of Leipzig with Prince Poniatowski. After the blowing up of the last bridge over the river, he managed to swim the Elster, but Poniatowski drowned. During the defensive campaign of 1814, MacDonald again distinguished himself. He was one of the marshals sent by Napoleon to take the notice of his abdication to Paris. 
When all were deserting Napoleon, MacDonald remained faithful. He was directed by Napoleon to give his adherence to the new regime, and was presented with the sabre of Murad Bey for his fidelity. Under the Bourbons, at the Restoration, he was made a peer of France and Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Order of St. Louis. He remained faithful to the new order during the Hundred Days. In 1815, he became Chancellor of the Legion of Honor, a post he held till 1831. In 1816, as Major General of the Royal Bodyguard, he took part in the debates of the Chamber of Peers, created under the Charter of 1814, voting consistently as a moderate liberal. From 1830, he lived in retirement at his country place courchels le where he died. Personal life. In 1791, he married Marie Constance Sorel de Montlouisi and had two daughters, Anne Charlotte, Adèle Elizabeth. In 1802, he married Felicity Françoise de Montholon, the widow of General Joubert, and had a daughter, Alexandrine Amy. In 1821, he married Ernestine Therese de Burgoing and had a son, Louis Marie. Scottish legacy. On 30 April 2010 a plaque was unveiled to the memory of Marshal of France Jacques MacDonald on the Outer Hebridean island of South Uist, the familial home of MacDonald. MacDonald had visited South Uist in 1825 in order to find out more about his family roots. Summation of him, the Encyclopaedia Britannica of 1911 says. MacDonald had none of that military genius that distinguished Dab out, Massena and Lannis, nor of that military science conspicuous in Marmont and St. Cyr, but nevertheless his campaign in Switzerland gives him a rank far superior to such mere generals of division as Audinot and Dupont. This capacity for independent command made Napoleon, in spite of his defeats at the Trebia and the Battle of Katzbach, trust him with large commands till the end of his career. As a man, his character cannot be spoken of too highly. No stain of cruelty or faithlessness rests on him.